something visually gives you pleasure, you should embrace that. That's part of kind of our, our human desire, humanity. Part of what we're doing here at the museum is to really focus on storytelling and what fuels uh, art, artistic creativity and curiosity. The exhibition is Guillermo del Toro at Home with Monsters. It looks at uh, Mexican-born filmmaker Guillermo del Toro, who has done films such as Kronos, uh, Pan's Labyrinth, The Devil's Backbone. And instead of really focusing on his films per se, it really looks at his inspiration and uh, his own collection. And this collection is housed in a home in Los Angeles called Bleak House. It's an 11,000 square foot residence, and it is filled with film memorabilia, original comic book art, storyboards, and all sorts of uh, freaky knickknacks that you, you, you would not find anywhere else. It really becomes the kind of source for his inspiration. It fuels his curiosity and unlike most people who may, would maybe not want to be surrounded by these objects, he really is in kind of commune with them. He really feels uh, comfortable with these um, objects and sort of what they represent to him personally. One thing about Guillermo and his collection is its connection, say, to the beginnings of museum practice, speaking specifically about cabinets of curiosity. These were very eclectic collections from the early Renaissance, very elite individuals sort of had curios and objects from around the world, and it was a way to uh, encapsulate the, the world as a whole in a kind of microcosm in, in a room, this cabinet of curiosity. These become kind of pro the, the predecessor to, a, say, a private museum and then to the public museum. And so in its own way, we're kind of showcasing this act of collecting and how a museum also collects objects, collects stories, how they are from a variety of uh, cultures, from time periods. And I think that that's something that also uh, really resonates with Del Toro himself, that to be a storyteller on the level that, that he is, you need to have inspiration from art, from literature, from music. As a child, Guillermo del Toro was a bit of an outsider. He openly admits that he had night terrors, that he had kind of lucid dreams, and that you know he, he saw things. And later on, much later on, these, these visions have kind of made their way into his films. But I think at an early age, he had to also figure out a way to deal with what he was seeing and, and kind of make that productive and not sort of stop him from being a, a member of society uh, and expressing himself artistically. And so part of how he found a, a way to give voice to that was through a library that his father had. And this library in particular had a medical encyclopedia, which he read cover to cover, which he says made him a hypochondriac. And then he had an artistic, uh, an art history uh, encyclopedia, 10 volumes, that he also read cover to cover. And this really steeped 
his, I think, visual world, not only in these images and visions that he was seeing, but also in the world of art and art history. How does an artist come to do what they do? What fuels curiosity? I think for someone like Del Toro, it is all these things that are in Bleak House. And at the same time, I think for the museum, it then becomes a question of how do we define an artist? Is that maybe more broadly defined? To summarize this show, it really is about trying to show how artistic creativity is fueled. And that is different for every artist. I think it's a very unique kind of recipe of uh, inspirations that make Del Toro who he is as a person and also uh, fuels the creativity that you then see in his films on screen. And what the exhibition tries to sum up is that this is, this is a story that is then told in every object in the exhibition, in every object in the museum. Visit pioneer.org slash postcards to catch up on missed episodes and to find out more about your favorite segments. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien, in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. Live Wide Open, a regional movement that encourages people to make a great life for themselves in west central Minnesota. More at LiveWideOpen.com. Alexandria, Minnesota a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at ExploreAlex.com.